So you have this, this pattern in, in modern times as well as in medieval times of, of orthodoxy and heresy. And the orthodoxy is backed up by a huge, uh, you might call authoritarian structure hmm. uh, behind it. Uh, how do you see that, Peter? Uh, I think that there are lovely examples. We can go to consciousness. Uh, let's take Dan Dennett um, in his book, The Nature of Mind. And here he gives a wonderful description, Dennett's description, of what mind is. And uh, he argues that you have to know all about the neurons. And if you know all about the neurons, then you will understand mind and you'll understand consciousness. But most scientists are very badly educated. What they don't know is what Dan Dennett's assumptions are. His assumptions are that you can only see, uh, you can only deal with those things that you can see and measure. That's what he says. He says the mind is a peep show. So um, there cannot be mind in his formulation. The result is he ends up with saying you have to know all about uh, the actual details of the neurons and then consciousness will arise. Now if people were really told what Dan Dennett's assumptions were, they'd all say, well, come on, you know, we actually now believe in downward causation. But that was a, a major change. Mm. Do you remember? It was all neurons going up and then psychoneuroimmunology psycho came along and said maybe mind can affect these things. And then there was the real difficulties. In fact, Sperry, who got his Nobel Sperry Prize views, for yes, exactly. uh, corpus callosum mm. cuts uh, in the early 90s, um, he, he made this daring uh, assumption in his uh, Nobel Prize speech that downward causation did occur in the nervous system. Mind could actually change things in the nervous system. It was a radical idea. And uh, I think one hasn't to be too hard on science because if you take it over a longish period of time, these ideas do come in. Uh, everybody talks now about psychoneuroimmunology. It, it, it's quite common that the mind affects uh, the brain, which affects the immune system. And the idea that you get cancers because you're sad is uh, well within in our scientific understanding. But try to extend man, mind outside the brain in the area that you've been doing, Rupert. Mm. And then you come up against this very, very strong to be. Well, in, 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 in each of these cases, you have the assumption underlying it that the mind actually produces the brain. Sorry, the brain, sorry, the brain produces consciousness. Right? Yes, yes. And, yes. and whatever, whether it's a mentalism or whether it's, a, it, it's, um, it's uh, identity theory, there are various ways of putting it, it, it still, still amounts to a materialistic understanding of consciousness. And this is really the, the threshold that the both of you have expanded beyond, um, but, but, but which is jealously guarded by, by the orthodox view. Mm. Yes, I, th I think it's a shame, really, because there's so many phenomena that uh, are important to us where mind clearly acts beyond the brain. Uh, one of the ones which I'm doing, studying at the moment, are approaching death experiences, and this is what happens when you die. And there are a whole set of phenomena which occur during the dying process, which suggests extended mind. And, bef and before you die, there are questions again about extended mind. For example, you're taken through the dying process by a dead relative. Uh, we have lots of accounts of that. At the time of death, the dying person goes to meet somebody else, for a, a, a telepathic-like experience. And then there are these wonderful things that occur as people die. Um, it's the, the, the sort of shaking of the structure of, of, of the world. Bells ring, clocks stop, um, light is seen, things leave the body. It's, it's, a, it's the most amazing time of death. But uh, from the point of view of our mechanical view, the clock stops and the brain dies and that's it. But it's so the extinction of consciousness, but everything that you're finding in around near-death experience and nearing-death experience suggests that consciousness is not extinguished. It's this is very challenging for, for the orthodox materialist uh, view. It's impossible for the orthodox materialist. They don't like it at all. They, immedi they immediately rationalise it mm. and explain but it away. And, and, and how, did you, do you see that, uh, is it possible for a breakthrough to occur in that, in that field, do you think? I, I think that the way the breakthroughs will occur is uh, because the scientific evidence gets to a point where people can't ignore it. When people start doing experiments like Rupert is doing, 
when people start looking at the dying process, then these things are all there. And providing that uh, people are willing to recognize them, then, then I think science will move on. Well, that's a key point, because it, it, they don't recognize it. They, <laughs> they try and ignore it, if possible, or explain it away.